Now, what can we do? Change. Simplify. Let's change everything to sine and cos. So I've got minus sine x on the top over 1. Then I got set. What is set? 1 over cos in the bottom. Minus 10. That is minus sine over cos there. And I got minus cosec, which is minus 1 over sine. So we are dealing with fractions now. We're dealing with fractions. We need to invert and multiply all the fractions. And let's see what happens. So I got minus sine x all over 1 times 1 over cos x. Here's a division sign here. I'm going to change it to multiplication. And whatever fraction I have in the bottom, I'm going to swap the numerator and denominator or invert it. So I've got minus sine over cos, which will become minus cos over sine. I could have cancelled there in the bottom. I'm just going to do it all in one. Obviously, I can see sine and sine will cancel. But I'm just getting rid of this division sign first. Minus 1 over sine will become what? Minus sine over 1. Now it's all multiplication. So let's start cancelling. What can I cancel here? Sine and sine. Sine on the top, sine in the bottom. Or this sine with that sine. You need a pair. It must be two. One on the top, one in the bottom. Anything else? Cosine, cos. Cosine and cosine. Is that all? Yes. Okay, so now we got a negative times a negative times a negative, which is? Negative. Negative, and we just left with? Sine X. Sine X. But here, you obviously, you need a lot of practice here. Uh, we got about three to four minutes. Let me answer the next one. Quickly. Last time, yeah. Roman. <laughs> You're taking some photos. Right. Simplify again. 5.2.1. What do we have then? Set minus and sign. Simplify by making use of basic trig identities. Okay. Let's try and rewrite everything in terms of sine and cos. So, sec can be written as what? 1 over, one over ten. cos. Ten. What about tan? We just wrote, wrote it down. That will be sine theta all over cos theta, and then we have sine theta. Okay. So now, this is 1 over cos. What do we have here? Sine over cos is a fraction. So therefore, sine over 1 is the other fraction. Can you see that? Yes. So what do we, how do we multiply? Numerator times numerator. Denominator times denominator. Minus sine times sine is minus sine squared. Cos times 1 is just cos. Now, we are dealing with fractions. We need to add or subtract. There's a minus sign. We need to subtract. Is the denominator common? Yes. Yes, so let's write it down one. I will write down my common denominator one time. And on the top, I have one minus sine squared. I'm sure you're familiar with one minus sine squared. From your square identities, you know that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Okay. So, here it's 1 minus sine squared. So, what do we know? Cos squared is equal to 1 minus, one minus sine squared. All I'm doing is taking sine squared to the right. So, I can replace 1 minus sine squared with what? With cos squared. 
all divided by cos. And now, these are exponents. Cos times cos, divided by cos. Cos on the top, cos in the bottom will cancel. Your final answer is just cos. cos. Let's see to the next one. That is the next one there, 5.2.2. divided by cos theta. What do we do? What do you notice here? There's a minus, there's a plus here. So, A minus B, A plus B. You should recognize that standard form. A minus B, A plus B is the difference of two squares. So therefore it is A squared minus B squared. So therefore this will be 1 squared minus sine squared a squared minus b squared. Can you all see that? Divided by cos. So what is 1 squared? 1 minus sine squared again. What minus sine squared we had? We just had the same thing. Cos squared. What minus sine squared is? Cos. Cos squared all divided by? Cos. Cos, cos squared divided by cos is? Cos. Cos. You just had this. I wonder why they gave the same type <laughs> in the exam. Then I deal with the last one. Yes. Or you leave it out for the exam. If you see it. Move on to the next. calculator. We got sine of 150 degrees. Where is 150 degrees? So it's in between 90 and 180. So therefore it is the second quadrant. So how can we rewrite 150 degrees? 180 minus or 90 plus 90 plus what? That is 150 degrees. 90 plus what? 90 plus 60. You have 250. It's up to you. You understand? But the easier option is not to use the pro-ratio. Okay, there's nothing too difficult, but it, it just takes it's just one extra step when you're dealing with pro-ratios. So stick to 180 minus, 180 plus, 360 minus. But remember, there is the other way to do it also. So... That is going to be 180 minus 30. What about 330 degrees? Which quadrant will you find that? In between 270 and 360 is 330 degrees. You are in the fourth quadrant. How can we rewrite that? 360 minus 30 or 270 plus 60. Am I right? 270 plus 60. So you have two options, but let's use the easier option, which is 360 minus 30. What about 240 degrees? Which quadrant will you find that? In between 180 and 270, you are in the third quadrant. So 180 plus what? 60. Or 270 minus 30. Okay. Minus cos 210. 210 again in between 180 and 270. So 210 will be 180 plus what? 30. Let's deal with 120 degrees. 120 degrees, which quadrant? Second. Second. 
second quadrant. So that will be 180 degrees minus 60. So now, we, it's almost the same thing that we are doing here. Can you see that? It's just that we don't have x, we have the real angle now. Okay. So I'm going to do this quickly. Which quadrants? Second quadrants. Sine is positive, so that is a positive sine 30 degrees. Fourth quadrant, cos is positive, so that is a positive cos 30 degrees. This is third quadrant, tan is positive, so that will be tan of 60 degrees. Which quadrant is this? 180 plus. Third quadrant, cos is negative, so that is minus cos of 30 degrees in brackets because of the negative sign that was there. Can you see that? Yes. Which quadrant is this here? 180 minus. Yes. Second quadrant is tan of uh, positive or negative? Yes. So that's minus 10, 60 degrees. Now special angles. When I was in school, we had to learn our special angles, but now you've got the Casio calculator. Right, so sine of 30 degrees, 1 over 2. Cos of 30 degrees, what is cos of 30 degrees? Square root 3 over 2. Tan of 60 degrees, square root 3 over 1. Cos of 30 degrees again, square root 3 over 2. Okay, sorry, that is negative times negative, which is positive. positive. Negative times negative, positive. Tan of 60 degrees again, which is square root 3 over 1. You all got that? Okay, let's work it out. So, on the top, what do I have now? I got square root 3 over 4 minus square root 3 over 1 on the top. Can you see that? In the bottom, I have square root 3 over 2 plus square root 3 over 1. Without a calculator, let's work it out. What if you cheat? Okay, without I a love calculator. Cheating. So I'm going to find an LCD on the top, LCD in the bottom. So that is equal to square root 3 over 4 minus 4 square root 3 over 4. 4 and 4. What is 4 divided by 4? 1. I'm not changing anything. Can you see that? I'm writing it with a common denominator. So that will be square root 3 over 2 plus 2 root 3 over 2. All denominators are common now. So, therefore, this will be square root 3 minus 4 root 3 all over 4 on the top. And here we got square root 3 plus 2 root 3 all over 2 in the bottom. That is LCD, which most students have a problem with. Okay, so now I can work this out. 1 minus 4, that will be minus 3 root 3 over 4. 1 plus 2, that will be 3 root 3 over 2 then. You follow? So that will be minus 3 root 3 over 4. I'm going to change the division sign to multiplication. So that will be 2 divided by 3 root 3. What will happen now? Square root 3 and square root 3 cancel. 3 and 3 cancel. So I end up with minus 2 on the top, 4 in the bottom, which is minus 1 over 2. Do we get minus 1 over 2 with the calculator also? You must check your answer. Alright, so I'm going to put this one up on YouTube, it's up to you if you want to see it again, but you already have the notes, but mainly for the other students, that's if they get the news.